Good morning, traders. Welcome to Privateer FX Asian Preview, North American wrap. <clears throat> All the focus today was in dollar yen. Let's take a look at here, th this chart here. These are good to look at. <clears throat> Daily closes are extremely important. So you can see here where we are today. We're closing. We, the market hasn't closed just yet, but we'll do in about 45 minutes here in uh, New York area. 107.82 is where we're trading. If we take a look back, September 8th, 2017, that was the low close of 2017. You can see here this horizontal dash line. It's a big deal. We did get down to as low as 107.40 today. We'll pop over to the uh, to the dollar yen uh, hourly chart. 240. Here's an hourly. The Bank of Japan was rumored to be buying this whole dip on the 107 handle. They were 107.60, 107.50. When equities were weaker on the open after uh, after the Nikkei had sold off in, in Asia, Dalian got get down to a low of 40 in our session. And now we're closing back up here at 107.80. <clears throat> There's a trend line here that I drew a long time ago. It's on the 240 chart. Uh, must, uh, must be a bigger one. This is a weekly. Oh, yeah, here it is, the weekly. <clears throat> Just connecting some of these old lows back from the 98 um, handle low, but that was back in 2016. So you can see how uh, how important this 107, both this 107.30 area, which was that low, and the 107.85, which was a low close. These are very key levels going into the most and in highly anticipated economic data point out of the U.S. in a long time. Every research piece I read, they're talking about how important CPI is tomorrow, the core month-on-month -month number. Let's put things into perspective here. So I was reading yesterday that the 10-year bond futures in the U.S. are at the, the, sh the, the speculative positioning, CFTC positioning is the shortest of all time. I don't have a chart of it here. It's on my Bloomy. But um, so if you think about that, the speculators are betting on higher 10-year yields. And the positioning is all-time record shorts in the actual 10-year future. This is a little bit concerning to me if this number, which is a, seasonally January, is a stronger CPI print. So if the core CPI comes in better than expected, uh, 0.1 better than expected, um, currently the market consensus is the core CPI is expected 0.2% month-on-month. Uh, we also have retail sales, but I don't think that that's going to make a, a huge difference. Uh, the market will be focusing on the, the core and the headline CPI numbers tomorrow. So it's expected 0.2%. If it comes in 0.3, so 0.1 beat, I think we will see a bit of a dollar rally. You'll see an extended, extended selling of bonds. I think stocks will come under a little bit of selling pressure as well. Um, Let's not forget that it's only been a couple weeks since that non-farm payroll and the average hourly earnings, uh, or more importantly, the average hourly earnings spooked the market, set off big bond selling, stock selling, some dollar buying. That led to what we witnessed the past two weeks in the implosion of some of these uh, inverse VIX ETFs and a huge spike in the VIX from 10 up to 50. We've shown you that chart. VIX settled around 25 today. Um, so we are in this, this is embedded in people's memories of what happened last time. There were some inflationary data points coming out of the U.S. And uh, so that, that would, you know, there'd be a similar reaction um, if the CPI number comes in 0.1 or higher. Um, so 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.4 would be a big, big beat. On the flip side, with this market positioning, 
record shorts in the 10 years, expecting higher rates, if, and we have a seasonal January seasonal of higher inflation, the market seems well positioned for a higher CPI print. If this comes in at, the core comes in at 0.1 or even zero, that would be a major surprise and the market would buy back, start buying back their bond shorts. The currency trade there would be dollar selling. I think stocks would rally on a weaker CPI print. I think bonds would rally aggressively. The dollar in general will sell off. I don't think dollar yen is the best way to, um, to express that dollar selling, but I think things like Australian dollar, Kiwi dollar, sterling, the euro, the euro's you know, closing pretty bid today, 123.55. I think you'd see an extension of uh, dollar selling against those pairs. Dollar yen, I, I don't think it's worth it. I think it's too risky because it could be a kind of a risk on to a dollar risk, uh, you know, a risk on to kind of a dollar selling and dollar yen would be pushed and pulled in between those two themes. So uh, we don't ha really have much data. We have some uh, stuff coming out of Japan, uh, preliminary GDP readings, you know, generally not a market mover. We, we really have no explanation for the 100-point sell-off in dollar yen overnight. Um, some people were blaming it on some, some, uh, some of Trump's comments um, about reciprocal tax. Uh, there were some other headlines last night during Asia about um, we, the, Japan has not decided if Kuroda will be the next um, BOJ governor. They have a wide open slate. They could pick anyone they want. So may, maybe a combination of those two things sent dollar yen lower. Um, but you know, just reading through all the research today and, and all the morning notes, there, there wasn't a real clear explanation of this. So, again, not much going on in, in, during Asia time zone or in Europe for that matter. Everyone is sitting on the edges of their seats waiting for the U.S. CPI number tomorrow. Good luck trading. Uh, it looks like dollar yen maybe has a little, maybe a little push back up to 108 during your session. Uh, but I do think things will just be trading in a range ahead of uh, the CPI numbers tomorrow. Good luck and uh, keep an eye out for us on the European Open. All the best. Cheers.